Hello, Hoobalados. Today I'm going to discuss, uh, after following our last videos, a little bit about getting the Hoobalado visa or the uh, Pichinado visa in Panama. And one of the things that we notice is a lot of people are getting the Friendly Nations visa and they're going into details about the Friendly Nations visa, but I don't see a lot following up about the Hubalata visa, which is by far the easiest visa to get. Uh, you get the advantages of all the discounts with the Hubalata visa. The biggest setback to the visa that I see is that you are not allowed to work in Panama. You cannot get a work permit. Uh, you can own a business is my understanding, however, you are not allowed to work in that business other than just general oversight and administration. So one of the things to discuss about getting the Hubilada visa is if you are married, you're going to need a marriage certificate. And I'm going to cover at the beginning of this one issue as is the difference between authentication and apostille. Uh, apostille is done by the Secretary of the U.S. or the Secretary of State in the U.S. Uh, of each of your documents and those they recognize if it's a state document the state uh, Secretary of State will handle it and if it's a federal document the U.S. Secretary of State will handle it. Uh, otherwise your documents need to be authenticated and you get your them authenticated through the Panama Consulate of the United States. There are several scattered around the United States. You can send it to any of them to be uh, authenticated. One thing though to get a document authenticated is it has to be notarized first. So you get the notary stamp on it, you sign, basically they're sign, you're signing saying that it's an original signature and the notary stamps it. You send that to the Panamanian consulate and they authenticate it. Once authenticated, that is not the final step. It has to be sent to the, U, the Panama consulate in Panama to be re-authenticated. Generally, your attorney handles that for you. So when we had like her Texas Municipal uh, Retirement stamp uh, in the U.S., we had to send it to our attorney who sent it to the Panamanian consulate in Panama who re-authenticated it. They, the lawyers and the attorneys handle all of that. So when we're looking at something like a marriage certificate, that's done by each individual state, and each individual state has certain rules on what it takes to be married. So Deb and I both got married in uh, Las Vegas, and in Las Vegas, uh, we sent off, we got new, recently dated marriage certificates, because it has to show that it's recently dated. It has to be within six months of your arrival in Panama and turning your paperwork in. We took that document that we received and we turned around and sent it to the Nevada Secretary of State who apostolated it and returned it to us. And once we had those apostolated, then we started working on the next thing, which was our uh, FBI background checks. We actually used a FBI approved agency and went there, they digitally fingerprinted us and they sent them off to the FBI. And within 30 minutes, we actually had our FBI reports back digitally. We downloaded the uh, Adobe, Acrobat Adobe Acrobat file, which is a PDF file, and we sent that to a third party service who handled dealing with the Secretary of State since the Secretary of State in the U.S. was shut down during the COVID process. They will actually handle all your documents, but it can be rather expensive, up to six, seven hundred dollars to get all your documents handled. However, we just use them for our FBI background checks. We handle the rest of the stuff on our own. We sent it to this third party agency. They sent it all over to the US Secretary of State to get it uh, finally apostolated. That took almost six weeks and it was actually pushing us kind of close. So we actually sent our documents also, the FBI stuff. We had it notarized and sent it to the Panamanian consulate to be authenticated. So we actually have authenticated documents and apostolic documents for the same document. And that's okay, just that if we would have had to use the Panamanian documents that we had to authenticate it here, we would have just had to send them down earlier to be re-authenticated. So what we recommend is to have them apostolic if possible, authenticated if necessary. Moving on to the next thing was birth certificates. For children, you will need birth certificates that are apostolic from each Secretary of State. And that is mainly for children. We had one of our attorneys tell us that we needed birth certificates and we had one of our attorneys tell us that we did not. So we weren't exactly sure. We went ahead and got it done anyway. So we sent off and filed for new birth certificates to be mailed to us from our states. And once we got those from the vital records, 
we turned around and resubmitted them to the Secretary of State to be a positive lead, and we actually got those back within days. It was actually a very fast turnaround. Uh, next was retirement income. To have a Hubilato visa or a Pensionado visa, you must have at least $1,000 in minimum income. After that, it's $250 for each additional person added on. Since my wife has actually a retirement from the cities uh, that she worked in, she has the retirement income that actually covers both of us. So she got the Pensionado visa application, she got it done, and I'm listed as an addition on there. However, she got that from the state system, and rather than giving it a possibly, we actually sent that off to the Panamanian consulate after it had been notarized uh, to get it authenticated. Once it came back to us, uh, we sent pictures to our attorney who said, all right, that one's been authenticated, you need to mail it to me, and we mailed it to them. They sent it to the Panamanian consulate down in Panama, and they re-authenticated it, so they had that document there waiting on us when we arrived. Um, the next thing is passport copies. You have to have a copy of every single page of your passport. However, you do not make that. Wait till you get to your attorney's office. They actually took our passports, made copies of every single page, and then they notarize them locally. And they submit all that with your paperwork as well. They will also keep your passports at that point because you have to have a multi-entry, multi-exit visa or else it's a fine leaving the country and coming back. Uh, so you get the multi-entry, multi-exit visa, and they also stamp that you applied for residency. Now this creates an issue with driving. Once those stamps are in there, you can no longer drive in Panama on your U.S. driver's license. That is only allowed for tourists. Once you apply for residency, you are no longer a tourist. Uh, so what they'll do is while that is being processed, they will actually give you a copy of your passport and the page with your tourist visa on it. You can use that if you're driving a rental car or something like that until you get your passport back. Once you get your passport back, it's all over. They can see those multi stamps in there and those stamps say you're a resident and basically voids out that tourist visa that you had to begin with. So there are three ways to get your driver's license in Panama. Uh, the first two are kind of complicated and involved. The third one's actually the easiest and expedited way. The first one, you end up having to go to the U.S. Embassy and get your driver's license authenticated. Then you have to go over to the Panamanian Ministry of Foreign Relations and then get it re-authenticated with them. And then you go uh, to get your blood type and get lab work. And then you can actually go to, I believe it's Sir Tracen, to get all of your uh, paperwork processed. And you have to do hearing and vision tests there. And you have to do that with all of them. So the second way is you actually go through driving school and retake your driver's history and driving test and kind of go through the whole school process. I have seen online through several of the online forums where a few of the driving schools kind of expedite things if you're already a driver from the U.S. and you have a current valid driver's license with no history of accidents and all of that. The third way is by far the simplest. You get your DMV uh, certificate in the United States just to print out of your DMV record. You can get that online in a lot of places in the U.S. You need to have that notarized. Every single page needs to be notarized. Then you get the front and back copy of your driver's license. It needs to be in color, I believe. And you need to get that notarized. Those need to be sent off to the Panamanian consulate in the U.S. and be authenticated. Those need to be sent through an attorney to be re-authenticated in Panama. And then you still need to get your blood test when you get there. It's fairly cheap. I've seen several places that say, I guess it's only like $5 for a blood test. And then you go in and you get your vision and hearing te uh, test done at Sertacin. And then uh, it's pretty much a paperwork shuffle from that point. I highly recommend Jackie's book. She by far has all the information that you need online. Um, Deb and I bought that book and it's kind of been our guidance and as we went through researching moving to Panama. It gives you all the stuff about how to get driver's license, how to get your visas, day-to-day -day living. She has contacts to go for tourism, uh, for just people driving you around and getting around, to renting cars, to just functioning day-to-day -day in Panama. So we highly recommend Jackie Lang's book with Panama Relocation Tours. And we look forward to seeing you next time on here. If you have any questions that we can answer, type in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up, hopefully, and subscribe. Have a good day, Hubilatus. Goodbye.